what you need to start your day. Tim Dennis in the morning on News Talk 610 CKTB. Good morning. Welcome back to the program. Ten minutes to go till the top of the hour. It's 7.50 in the a.m. Monday, March 16th. Just a few hours away now. And I vowed I would uh, resist the urge to do a bad Irish accent. It's one of those occasions when everybody tries to do the accent of the country of origin of whatever it is you're celebrating. Most of us think we're doing just a fabulous job. Unless, of course, you're talking to somebody that's actually from there and they say, please don't try to do our accent. <laughs> please, please don't do, drink the green stuff, but don't do an Irish accent. So I'm going to resist the urge to do any more of that. Uh, but I don't know whether I'll be successful. On the line with us today to talk about all things St. Patrick's Day, green cuisine, Kimberly Turner, cooking with Kimberly, of course. Uh, Kim, welcome to, back to the program. Uh, Tim was supposed to talk to you, but uh, gosh darn it, I'm happy to be here. I'm not upset, Lee. <laughs> okay, all right. We wish him a speedy recovery, but I Absolutely. love speaking to you. And uh, since we chatted the first time on uh, about Pancake Tuesday, not all right. that long ago, right. uh, I've been following your website. You do some awesome things on there. Well, thank you. You have. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it was less than 24 hours after we talked. You had a podcast up and the things that we talked about uh, yep. on the thing you had pictures of. And wow, a social media guru you are. Hey, you know, you got to be in these days. <laughs> yeah. So what have you done to prepare for St. Patrick's Day? Well, let's start off with beverages. Everyone has to be happy, so we're going to satisfy the kids, we're going to satisfy the adults, and then we're also going to do something for dessert. So we're going to have brown lemonade. Now, brown, brown? Brown lemonade. Now, in Northern Ireland particularly, they like brown lemonade, but it comes in the form of a soda. Okay. So they use that as their mixer for whiskey and things like that, as we would like 7-Up or something like that, right? So we're going to do brown lemonade. They also have white lemonade and a red lemonade in soda. <clears throat> but I made a brown, version of brown lemonade that minus the soda that you can add club soda to. Okay. So check that out, and the kids can have that, and you can use that for your mixer. Okay, so for the day. so so the brown thing is actually a real Irish background, and everything doesn't have to be green. Then no, 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 not everything has to be green. In fact, brown lemonade is one of the things that people that um, are from Ireland really miss when they move away. <laughs> okay, interesting stuff. <laughs> yep, yep. Or you could just make it green. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, what what is the easiest and safest way to make it green? Just a couple of drops of food color. That's it, huh? Yep. You're okay. good. Just like two or three. You don't need a whole a whole bunch. Okay. Now we're gonna move into a cocktail. I called did um, angry leprechaun cocktails. <laughs> okay. okay. So we're gonna rim your martini glass or whatever kind of cocktail glass you like with brown sugar and cayenne mixed together. Super fine. Wow. So that's got a up. that's got a bit of a kick to it. It does. So we're going to make this a leprechaun pretty angry, and then we're going to make him really happy at the end. Okay. Okay. So How do we make him happy now? <laughs> we're going to put the that around the rim. We're going to mix some whiskey, some Verner's I used, or you could use ginger ale, some freshly squeezed lime juice, and I use this really great thick balsamic from Wine Country Kitchens. It's from Napa Valley Vinegar Company, and you drizzle that in the bottom. It floats the and then I put one golden berry. I don't know if you've ever seen golden berries, but I've seen them in the grocery stores like crazy lately. And they kind of look like they're little golden berries, like, I don't know, the size of a large raspberry or something like that. But it's round. And they kind of look like a tomatillo inside. But they're very, very tasty. So you have at the end of the rainbow, you have the pot of gold. So <laughs> are these are these angry and he's got sour things going on and then you've got the gold at the end. These golden berries are they like hard or are they like a blueberry soft? They're firm. No, they're quite firm. Huh. And they're gorgeous. Never and heard. I I've been eating them like crazy. <laughs> are they good for you? <laughs> they are. They're good for you. In fact, they're um they're from South America originally. Okay, and th is that their official name, Golden Berries, or they That's have another what it says name? on there, Golden Berries. Yep, you can look it up too. They have a number of other names too, like I don't know, maybe 20 other names, but yeah. yep, wow. that's what they're uh, marketed under right now. And they are available in Niagara? They are available in Niagara at some major grocers that I've been to. Do they taste like anything else we might be more familiar with? Not really. They're, t they're maybe like a kiwi. 
Okay. Kiwi strawberry sort of tangy flavor. Okay. Really, really nice. Really nice. Got to cool. try it. So you've got this beautiful green drink with the gold in the bottom, and it's just hanging out in that balsamic. And what a beautiful combination. I- so that's the angry leprechaun. Angry leprechaun. I like it. And then, of course, Irish coffee with whipped cream for dessert. Oh, yeah. Very simple. Use some Irish whiskey all as well. Okay, main courses. Main courses. Well, we're going to start off with a shamrock salad with Guinness balsamic vinaigrette. That's going to be for the sides or or an appetizer. And it's just a salad with all green. And I started with a base of baby spinach. So any kind of vegetable that you can think of or fruit, I put some kiwi on there and green peppers and nice lettuce and spinach. And then I whipped up a Guinness balsamic vinaigrette. Really, really tasty. So for our entrees, aside from the typical corned beef with vegetables or shepherd's pie that everyone likes to do, you can do, uh, I did a Napa Jack's beer braised. I'm I'm sorry, you broke up there. Napa Jack's what? Napa Jack's beer braised citrus herb pork loin. And I did it with Guinness. Beer braised pork loin. Yes. Have to be careful how you say that. Yes. Exactly. Then I also did a steak and Guinness pie, and that was unbelievable. But you could also do a hearty beef stew. You could make coddle, which is, you know, pork, bacon, potatoes, and onion in like a stew form. Right. So there's a lot of different options. I even did some sausage and rice stuffed peppers, obviously, and green peppers. Ooh, (laughs) yeah. Yeah, no question. Yeah, no yellow peppers for this. No yellow peppers. And then for a side, I did some baked steak fries with dill, some nice fresh dill. So you get that green and the potatoes. Um, A healthy mixed chopped salad is always welcome because it's quite a hearty uh, food that you're going to serve everybody. Very casual and very hearty. So a nice salad to lighten things up uh, along with that shamrock salad in the beginning, and you're good to go. But you could do mashed potatoes, creamy dill mashed potatoes or bacon mashed potatoes. Brussels sprouts with bacon, potato, apple. Everyone knows the kind of theme. It's bacony, apple, onion, you know, Yeah. and even seafood. Seafood is a really nice option because don't forget, they're the Emerald Isle, and they have a lot of, um, a huge bounty of seafood that they use. So you could do all kinds of seafood stews, Irish cream, not Irish cream, Irish whiskey uh, <laughs> stew and stuff like that with lobster or other kind of shellfish. Really nice. But mm. don't forget dessert, Lee. I was going there. All I was right. going there. Go. I know, I know. This is the part that scares me. Well, no, don't be scared. Cause no, in a good way. Yeah. We did chocolate whiskey dipped potato chips. What? Beautiful combination between the sweet um, chocolate, but I use bittersweet and regular chocolate. And then you, with some whiskey, and you dip these nice, try and get some firm chips, like rippy, rippled ones or ridgy ones. Yeah. Beautiful presentation. The kids like it. You know, the alcohol dissipates, so don't worry. Okay. Yeah, and then I have about barm brack bread. Now, barm brack is one of their traditional breads, and it's like a speckled, it's almost like, it looks like a fruitcake, but it's a bread. And okay. I used hascat berries and currants and raisins and sultanas and green um, candied cherries. Really, really gorgeous. And if you, you know, it's a great alternative for people that don't want to make a fruitcake at Christmas time, too. It's much faster. All right. So I want to I want to move back, though, to your chocolate whiskey dip chips. <laughs> I have one other thing for you, too, that you're going to Oh, okay. Go, go ahead. ahead. Do move that. Back. Do that first move thing. Back. Let's do it. Let's go back. Tell me. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to know. I want to know how you you dip it in whiskey first, then the chocolate. No, no. You combine the chocolate and the whiskey over a double boiler. Oh, okay. Yeah, All and then right. you dip it in. So, you could always use Irish cream, too. So then it's the boiling that gets rid of the alcohol part. It just leaves the flavor behind. Yep, that's exactly right. Okay, got it. All right, finish up last, here. What's the last one last you got? Last one, Guinness chocolate cupcakes with <laughs> cream cheese icing. <laughs> and everyone's going to be happy. Oh. <laughs> How does that one work? Absolutely fabulous. You put just some Guinness in the batter with it. You know, they uh, like to do Guinness chocolate cakes. So I just made them in smaller format in a cupcake so that people can walk around and eat, especially if you're entertaining people. You have little kids on hand, whatever. And again, the alcohol goes away. It just leaves the, the beautiful taste. This is one heck of a menu. When do you open up a restaurant, for heaven's hey. sake? <laughs> I have a restaurant in my house every day. <laughs> I, I guess you do. Yeah. Now, obviously, these recipes are available on your website, Cooking with Kim, right? They are. But they, you can find everything pretty much everywhere. It's um, f- Follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E. You can check me out on Facebook.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on YouTube.com slash Cooking with Kimberly, iFood.tv slash Cooking with Kimberly, and my channel just launched last week. 
So you can, if you have a Roku uh, streaming player, you can get them at like Walmart and things, things like that, electronic stores. I have my own channel there, so it's Cooking with Kimberly. And then the website, cookingwithkimberly.com. Oh, uh, we love you. <laughs> Thanks, Louise. <laughs> okay. I appreciate you having me on. I Happy. Hope I didn't make you too hungry this morning. Uh, well, you did, but that's okay. That's your job. <laughs> it is my job. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patty's. Thanks. Enjoy. You're welcome.